Hello to everyone. Today we're going to talk about waves. Uh, this is uh, supposed to be a video for IGCSE, AS and A-level students uh, uh, with the basics on uh, the topic of waves. The first thing to do would be to define a wave. What is a wave? A wave is any disturbance that um, moves or travels uh, through a medium and uh, carries energy with it. Um, and when we say through a medium, the medium could be va uh, vacuum, okay? So uh, the first thing you would need to know then is the definition of a wave. And a wave would be, we said, uh, a disturbance or any disturbance that moves or travels through a medium carrying energy with it. Okay, so that's every time you uh, uh, create a vibration or move something or push or whatever that travels through the medium that is around you uh, or the medium that you push or the medium that you bang and that travels in a way of a wave. The next thing would be to know what types of wave we have. And there's various specifications, so I want to put this easy, explain it easily for you. Uh, the first classification would be if the wave travels or not. So uh, if it moves. And we have two types of wave there. We have the stationary or standing wave. And we have the progressive or traveling wave. You can see both waves. Okay, so the stationary wave is a stationary where the the points do not move travel in in uh, space; they just move up and down. Okay, um, some in and in this uh, types of wave, some mo points move, some are, uh, do not move, but the wave does not. Uh, Travel. Okay, uh, it is normally formed by reflection. Uh, there's a, uh, a wave moving one way; it reflects and uh, uh, crashes with the other wave. And there's an interference, and they stay, uh, and you create a stationary wave. And you, I'll show you a graph now of, of uh, what I mean. Okay, um, so uh, this uh, stationary waves don't move. Or travel and this move. Okay, uh, the best way to show to see, uh, uh, understand it is to see uh, both in action. Okay, so if you see this graph here, the top parts are moving in sp in space. Okay, either one way or the other. The top, the the two uh, top waves are obviously progressive or traveling waves. And the one on the bottom, you can see that the, the points move up and down, and some of them don't move at all, the nodes, okay? Um, they do move up and down, but they don't travel uh, uh, in space, okay? So, uh, as I said, the last one, the standing wave, is normally created by the by having the one moving one way and the other one moving uh, the other, and you have a, a, um, an interference, okay? Uh, so we can see uh, another graph of the sta of the standing wave, and you can see that there's you have what they, you call the nodes that do not move, and you have the crests and the troughs that do uh, move. Okay, uh, the particles move up and down, uh, but the wave, this particle over here, is not moving over there. Okay, that's why it's a stationary uh, wave. Okay, and you can see here. Uh, 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 a chord. Uh, you can see here a standing wave in action, okay? Uh, and what has to happen here is that the uh, progressive way reflected and the wave that went one way interfered with the way that you went the other one, and you can clearly see here the notes and the crests and the throws, okay? And that's a standing wave, it's the chord that is vibrating, okay? So, uh, as we were saying, uh, you have stationary and progressive waves. Uh, you would need to know an example of uh, uh, of each. 
So for example, the stationary uh, wave could be the chord of a, of a, of a musical instrument. And we all know uh, that they don't move. Okay, but they vibrate and progressive uh, waves could be, for example, a light moves uh, or sound that moves uh, through space. Okay, so another classification would be um, uh, would be how they move. Okay, and then again, you have two types here. You have uh, the um, uh, you have the uh, transverse waves and the longitudinal. Okay, in the longitudinal waves, the particles move in the in the same direction. In the same direction. As the uh, as the wave, and in the transverse, particles move perpendicular to the wave. And again, um, it is very uh, it is very strange when someone explains this like that. So I've got a video here with a model that shows. Uh, don't look at the top part, the top part are circular waves, but look at the uh, blue and the yellow balls. And the, the yellow ones are longitudinal, let's look at them now. And the particle, the wave as you see is moving from uh, this way, and the particles are moving in the same direction. But on the blue ones, particles are moving up and down, but the wave is moving, uh, is moving left and right, uh, or, or right and left. Uh, so that bottom part, yellow ones, are longitudinal and the blue ones are uh, transverse. Okay, so the movement of the particles in the transverse is uh, perpendicular to the movement of the wave. Okay. So what examples could we see of, uh, of, uh, of these types? Okay, so we all already know that in, trans, uh, in transverse, And uh, longitudinal, for example, sound waves, sound waves, the vibrate, the particles are vibrating, each moving, uh, this particle moves the other one, which it moves the other one, and they are all vibrating in the, uh, the, in the same direction as the, wave is, as the wave is going to move, okay? And then the last classification would be uh, through what they move. Okay, and then again we have two types. Okay, uh, the first time type would be uh, mechanical waves, and the other one would be electromagnetic. So mechanical waves need a medium through which to move. Okay. They need something to which to move. They cannot move in vacuum. Okay, uh, whilst electromagnetic waves do not need a do not need uh, a physical medium to move. They can move through uh, through uh, vacuum. Okay, so the best way to remember this is space. Okay, uh, so an example would be of mechanical waves would be sound. When uh, astronauts are in space. They need a radio to be able to communicate because sound does not travel through through the vacuum of space. It needs the particles of air to uh, move. Okay, so sound is a mechanical wave, whereas uh, one astronaut can can see the other one because light doesn't need. It's an electromagnetic wave and doesn't need uh, doesn't need um, the uh, uh, doesn't need air. Doesn't need a, a medium. Can travel through vacuum. Okay, uh, so uh, electromagnetics can travel through vacuum, and uh, we can. Uh, I said that uh, that light was uh, an electromagnetic, but also 
uh, for uh, for the astronauts to be able to communicate, they've got radios. So radio waves, radio waves are also electromagnetic. Okay. So we have defined waves, what they are, a disturbance that travels moves through a medium and can uh, and and carries energy. We have uh, seen the classification of different waves if they move or not, stationary or, or standing and, and the progressive or traveling, and examples of, the, of each, uh, and now how they move. So if they move, if particles vibrate in the same direction or perpendicular to the movement of the wave, and then through what? We have mechanical and uh, electromagnetic, okay? And how they move, we've got the longitudinal and the transverse, okay? So now we're going to see other uh, characteristics of, of waves, okay? So when we draw waves, uh, when we do a diagram of waves, we've got basically two diagrams that we can do. We can do a diagram that is displacement. So how the particles are moving, the displacement from the uh, point of, of uh, where they were not moving or from the point of equilibrium. Uh, with distance, okay, so how that moves in space, and we can have displacement versus time, okay? And we can see different characteristics in both, uh, in both uh, graphs. Be careful and check which graph you're studying. Okay, so we'll, we'll look at the first, uh, the first graph. We'll look at um, displacement versus distance, okay? So if we have a graph, uh, a graph like this, where this is displacement and this is distance, okay, and uh, a wave can be represented this way, okay. Where I am trying to put the top and bottom uh, sections at the same level Although as I'm doing it with by hand, bear with me because I might have uh, a few mistakes. Okay, so uh, let's look at different uh, what we can measure in a, in a wave. So the first thing is the amplitude. So this is the amplitude. It's normally called A with a capital uh, letter, and it's the distance between uh, the stationary point and the topmost uh, point. Okay, only this one. It's not the whole. It's just from the x-axis to the top part. And if you're looking at the uh, physical wave, it's from the point of where it was, the particle wasn't moving to the top displacement, okay? So uh, it can also be measured with a bottom displacement, okay? Yeah, so that's the amplitude. So that's the first thing we need to know, amplitude, okay? And it's a distance. So if it's a distance, it's measured in meters, okay? Or in centimeters, nanometers, whatever, okay? So the next thing we need to know is the um, is the wavelength, and the wavelength can be uh, you can represent it only in this graph, not in the other one, uh, because it's an it's a horizontal distance. It's the distance. The wavelength is the distance between two same points of a wave. Okay, it's in meters because it's a um, sorry for that uh, wavelength. So it's in meters and it's a distance between two equal points. And I'll explain now what I refer with two equal points. Okay, so the amplitude was the uh, maximum distance from displacement, okay? From e equilibrium, okay, for, from equilibrium. Okay, so uh, what do I mean by two equal points? Well, uh, the easiest way to measure the, the wavelength is from uh, the maximum points of the wave, which are called, now that we're doing that, these are called crests, these are called troughs, and the points that, when the, uh, that do not move are called nodes. Okay, so the easiest way to, to uh, measure the wavelength is between two crests. Why? We could measure it anywhere else, 
but uh, people make mistakes here because they think point A here is the same as point B because they're at the same height, supposedly, okay? Uh, but that's not correct because in point A, the, uh, the wave goes from up to down, it goes downwards, where in point B, the wave goes from bot from uh, uh, downwards to upward. It goes upwards. Okay, so points A and B are not the same. The correct the, uh, point A and C would be the same. So the wavelength would be this one. Okay, and as people and as you can easily make a mistake if you measure the wavelength uh, in points in the middle of the wave, the best way would uh, is to measure uh, the distance between two crests. Okay, but it's the distance between two equal points. Okay, so that's a uh, wavelength. Okay, uh, the next thing we need we need to know about waves are the concepts of frequency and this and uh, period. But for that we need the other type of uh, representation. So I'm going to do another gray another graph. Okay, where I'm going to draw where the axes are going to be different. Uh, this is going to be still displacement. So how much a point moves, but this is going to be time in seconds. Okay, so if we draw a similar graph again, I this is supposed to be the points are supposed to be um, the same distance here. This, the the amplitude is so supposed to be the same and the wavelength too. Okay, so sorry for the drawing. Okay, so if we're talking about time here. And uh, so the, we're supposed to, uh, this is supposed to be, for example, uh, uh, one second, uh, two second, three seconds, okay? Uh, we need to talk about now uh, period and frequency, okay? So when we're talking about period, period is measured in seconds, it's time. So it's uh, it's very easy. It's the time between uh, the time it takes. Sorry, it takes for a complete oscillation. Okay. So if you look here, uh, this one goes downwards and it goes. Uh, upwards here and it will goes downwards again so this point and this point are the same one and three so one two it's in this case it would be two seconds the period would be two seconds because it has completed we could also look from here goes upwards downwards upwards again so it takes two seconds so the period here would be two seconds in this wave over here okay it, the time it takes to do a complete oscillation the frequency, okay, is measured in uh, um, hertz, okay, so it, this is measured in hertz, which is, uh, which is the inverse of uh, a second, because the frequency is the number of oscillations The number of oscillations, uh, sorry, in one second. Okay. So for uh, and uh, what you need to know is that uh, the relationship between both is that the frequency is the inverse of the period, or the period is the inverse of the frequency. That's why hard, uh, hertz is one divided by second. Okay. So, for example, in the graph that we see here, uh, it takes two seconds for a, a complete oscillation. So, in one second, you make half of an oscillation. So, the frequency here would be 0 0.5 hertz, hertz sorry, or 0 0.5 uh, divided by oscillations divided by second. Okay. Um, the, the highest, the next thing I need to explain is that um, uh, if we have two different waves, okay, so if we have two different waves here, uh, again, displacement versus time, 
and we and we have the space when this is time and we have a wave like this and we have a wave like this okay we can clearly see that uh, in this wave okay the period is high uh, okay um, and the frequency is low why because it takes a lot of seconds to make one uh, uh, complete oscillation and in one second there's not much of, a, uh, of an oscillation so the frequency is low Very, uh, and uh, in the other one uh, the frequency is high because in one second you might have one two three oscillations okay and the period is low okay because um, you can make for example you, you can have a, a one oscillation in 0 0.5 or 0 0.2 seconds okay so this happens a lot uh, where the frequency is high the period is it happens always where the frequency is high the period is low but you can clearly see it when when a wave is packed it has high frequency and low period and when a, uh, when it's spread uh, along the axis it's got a high uh, period and a low frequency okay the last thing we want to talk about is uh, the speed of a wave or the velocity of a wave okay uh, there's a formula here uh, but I recommend you not to learn it by heart and I'll teach you a trick okay so you know from um, so from uh, the dynamics that the formula of the velocity is the uh, displacement divided by time okay uh, so uh, let's look at what this can be in a wave so we need the the velocity of uh the velocity stays like that displacement is meters and the displacement that we have in waves is the wavelength so we can substitute the uh, displacement by wavelength okay and what in waves is measured by time it's the period okay so there's a formula here where uh, we, you, we have the velocity of a wave with the wavelength and the period. It's more common to, to, substitute, to substitute the period by the frequency and we've already seen that the frequency is the inverse of the period. So we have, if we introduce that there, we get that the velocity of a wave is the wavelength times the frequency because i've just substituted one divided by t by frequency and that is the most common formula for uh the velocity of a, of a wave how how a wave moves through space okay uh, but again you don't have to remember it you just have to remember that uh the formula of velocity displacement divided by time change displacement by wavelength change the lower t by capital t which is another trick that people uh, try but then change whatever is measured by t uh, in seconds by uh, what it's measured in seconds by uh, in waves and then this is uh, this is this and uh, this is f so we can we can uh, change this into velocity x frequency times um, wavelength and we use that in exercises whenever we want to move how we want to find out how a wave moves through space in the exercises you also need to know two important uh, speeds of waves two very common ones one is the speed of light okay which we call c uh, and is three times ten to the power of eight meters per second okay very famous uh, uh, speed that you need to know uh, and it's the maximum speed that any thinking can, uh, can uh, travel uh, uh, by in in the universe it's a lim it's limitation that our universe has okay so by how it, by how it's uh, made okay and the other one is the speed of sound it sometimes comes up in exams sometimes they give it to you sometimes they think you know it okay and this has no uh, uh, so we can call it V because this has no special letter V of sound okay and this is 343 between 343 and 344 so you might have 343 or 344 meters per second okay depending on how you round it 
up. Okay, so we'll leave 343 uh, meters per second. And it's again, it's something that in some exams you need to know the speed of sound. Okay, uh, the speed of sound, sorry, in air, very important because uh, it's not the same in other uh, medium. Okay, so I think this is the basics of waves. Uh, I, I hope it has helped you and we'll go deeper into waves in other videos.